welcome viewers our topic today is features and categorization of elderly individuals for understanding the mental physical requirements please note that this is module 1 unit 2 friends in this particular program our learning points will be like this the theoretical learning programs that the outcomes that we expect you to receive from this program number one is to understand the physical and mental effects of aging on elderly people categorization and features of the elderly individuals in terms of various characteristics and finally physical and mental requirements of elderly of these different categories which were described in the second point the practical learning outcomes the practical classes and the assignments that will be given to you separately will demonstrate ways for overcoming resistance and managing conflicts with the elderly and his or family members evaluate the methods to appraise and deal with age related issues during communication so friends we will focus mostly on theory learning outcomes so first we start with physical and mental effects associated with aging first we will talk about the physical effects there are many physical effects the first one is decreased muscle mass and strength please understand as an elderly caregiver that these elderly people require your help and support because they are not as young as they used to be and the very particular effect of old age is observed in the decreased muscle mass and physical strength mentally they may think that they are very strong but the physical support may not come and sometimes the accidents may happen that is why it is necessary this is also known as sarcopenia it leads to reduced strength and ability and this potentially increases the risk of falls and fractures so that is what i said that as an elderly caregiver this is the area of biggest concern for you the second physical effect of aging on elderly people is the loss of bone density we all know that in that particular age because of the diet and so many reasons the lifestyle also their bone density reduces so this increases susceptibility to fractures and osteoporosis now these diseases affect the mobility of the elderly people so they are to be prevented in a timely manner next is changes in sensory perception we know that the vision deteriorates so decline in vision hearing there are hearing impairment cases sometimes sense and the taste and also the smell that uh, loss of smell is there impacting daily activities and overall quality of life of the elderly care people reduced cardiovascular function we know that the heart is not as strong as it used to be in the young age and so there is increased risk of heart diseases hypertension and other related cardiovascular conditions and that puts the elderly people in the danger zone with regard to their health conditions continuing with the physical effects there is slower metabolism that is leading to either weight gain or difficulty in maintaining a healthy weight as per the bmi joint stiffness and mobility issues we know that because of the lack of calcium in the body there are problems related to arthritis and other musculoskeletal conditions that can limit the mobility and cause discomfort in the elderly people there is another problem that is related with decreased immune function and we have observed in the corona period also that those individuals whether 
elderly people or belonging to any age group wherever there was less immunity those people could not survive the onslaught of corona pandemic so because of the old age this immune function also becomes less and less effective which increases greater susceptibility to infections and illness due to weaker immune system after having discussed the physical effects of aging now we come to the mental effects there are certain mental effects the first one is the changes in cognitive function mild cognitive decline including slower processing speed difficulty in multitasking and occasional memory lapses while dealing with elderly care people you should be very very careful with regard to the memory lapses because you should be completely mentally alert to take care of this particular problem in the persons whom you are providing care mental health challenges there are many psychological issues there are many problems of depression of anxiety loneliness due to life changes loss of loved ones or other related health issues so mental health must be taken care of strongly by you people you should see to it that they you engage these elderly people in such kind of exercises which increases positivity in their mindsets for example yoga meditation etc may help in this regard next is reduced brain plasticity learning new things might become more challenging maintaining mental agility through activities and puzzles that will also be taught to you in the practical learning outcomes as to what kind of practical exercises and games that you can engage your elderly people in next is sleep disorders now this is again a very common problem which is also known as insomnia so there is increased incidence of sleep disturbance or disorders such as insomnia or sleep apnea there are because of frequent urination there are disruptions in the sleep cycle and again ability to go back to sleep once again is causing a problem so increased risk of neurological conditions we know that the neurological problems are also quite evident in the elderly people so higher likelihood of developing conditions like parkinson's disease or even brain stroke that possibility is there if the neurological condition is not properly taken care of as an elderly caregiver you should be able to identify the scenes of uh, the early signs of these uh, problems and if necessary take the medical care because remember you are a non clinical category of elderly care giver now we move to the second aspect that is categories and features of the elderly individual basically there are five categories that we will be discussing the first one is independent seniors the features are that that they are generally self sufficient in daily activities they are because they are independent seniors sometimes they maintain good physical health also mental health also so they are independent they maintain a high level of independence in living arrangements they also engage actively in social and community related activities many of them go for morning walk along with their group of friends and all so you should encourage those things now there are certain characteristics also of independent seniors they manage their own finances and household tasks they also often live alone or they live with their spouse may require occasional assistance but are largely self reliant so in this case maybe the elderly care givers may not be required if required then your task is very very limited next is assisted living now here the features are they require some level of assistance with daily activities the degree is slightly higher than independent seniors they often live in senior housing or assisted living facilities they need help with tasks like meal preparation housekeeping or transportation sometimes even they like to have an elderly care giver who can also perform the duties of a driver for example so next is characteristics of assisted living people some characteristics are like that 
they maintain certain amount of independence but they rely on support for certain other activities benefit from a structured living environment with access to assistance when needed so they like to live in those surroundings where the system is there as and when they require they can call for those services third category is frail or medically complex elderly now these are the people who are suffering from some or the other physical uh, discomfort or physical uh, disability so they have some significant health issues or chronic conditions they also require consistent medical care and supervision they may reside in nursing homes or receive in home health care so that is where elderly caregivers are required for active support and sometimes 24/7 support may be required their characteristics are that that they depend on others for various aspects of daily living so day to day life depends on the support from elderly caregivers often need assistance with medication management personal care and mobility so you should be very very meticulous when dealing with these kind of uh, category of people because they are having physical health issues next comes to mentally challenged seniors there are earlier we have seen that there are mental effects of aging so we can have some mentally challenged uh, elderly care people you who can be assigned to you for taking care of so they experience cognitive decline dementia or alzheimer's disease so main problem with them is that of memory lapse they require specialized care focused on cognitive support and safety some of the characteristics are like that that they often need supervision to prevent wandering or accident sometimes they may just leave the household and they may wander around and sometimes they may be lost in the city so you have to be very very careful for taking care of them they benefit from structured routines and specialized care programs so you should have very clear cut daily care program for them finally we come to active and engaged seniors now these are the people who remain socially and mentally active they engage in hobbies volunteering or other social work they have good physical and mental health allowing independence for them they are quite similar to the first category of independent seniors actually they proactively take care of their health through exercise and a healthy diet they maintain strong social connections and involvement in their community so that is where the role of elderly care giver is nearly negligible in case of this category of persons so cultural background socio economic status and personal preferences greatly influence how individual experience aging now effective care plan consider these individual differences and tailor support accordingly to different categories of old age people that enable them to stay self sufficient you should not be providing over care for them promote social engagement for them encourage community involvement and social activities to prevent their isolation health monitoring yes you need to do regular health checkups and screenings to catch any issue early so that you can take them to the medical uh, doctors for further care next is assisted living now that is where the personalized assistance is required now more support is required as compared to the independent seniors you should offer support in task that they struggle with while preserving their autonomy so in certain task only they need your help so provide help wherever needed and those tasks which they can do on their own then you allow them to do that safety and comfort ensure a safe living environment and access to necessary amenities health care conditions assist in managing medications and arranging medical appointments frail or medically complex elderly we know that the comprehensive medical care is required for these people so we have to regular coordinate uh, with these healthcare professionals for providing specialized care for them now assistance with adls so uh, daily activities such as bathing dressing eating for these activities also you need to provide healthcare emotional support lot of emotional support is required so that you can take care of their emotional needs and you can become a good companion 
cognitively impaired or memory challenged seniors that is where you need to pro take ultimate care of them because these mental problems can be more difficult than the uh, physical problems so a specialized care is required to be given to them you should also involve their family members because once they are surrounded by their family members so those family members can also provide good emotional support you should always keep family members informed and involved about care decisions for these people so friends we know that uh, uh, there are uh, the active and engaged seniors as i said that there is not much of the support which is required but however you can promote their social connections you can provide health promotion for them as far as the aspects are considered such as general considerations for elderly care we know that individualized approach is required for different category of elderly people different approach is required that is why we have given these five different points to be considered for taking elderly care for different category of people friends in this particular program which is titled as the uh, features and categorization of elderly individuals for understanding the mental and physical requirements we have divided it into three segments in the first segment we talked about physical and mental effects which are associated with aging we discussed both the physical as well as the mental effects then we did the categorization of the elderly individuals into five categories and in the last segment we talked about what are the points to be considered for providing elderly care to these five categories of elderly people i hope that after listening to this particular uh, video your concepts of elderly care will strengthen thank you